tuning in to Ag PhD. I'm Brian Hefty. And I'm Darren Hefty. Thanks for joining us today. Okay, so this field was soybeans this year. It's going to be corn next year. My question is, do we need traits? Can we go conventional corn here? Or how much value is there in a BT for corn borers or for rootworm? All right, when we talk about going to corn next year, one of the most important nutrients, and granted, you don't need much, is boron. And we find it's short all over the country. We want to talk today about why it's so short and what you can do to fix that problem on your farm. Our weed of the week can certainly create some problems. We'll show you how to stop this weed coming up later in the show. But first, Here's this week's Farm Basics. Farm Basics is brought to you by the Liberty Link Trait and Liberty Herbicide from Bayer. The most reliable weed management solution, Liberty Link and Liberty Herbicide are the link to efficient row crop production and sustainable weed management. Farm Basics time today, we're going to talk about crop residue. Why is it so important for farmers and what should we be doing with it? Well, crop residue is just the above ground portions of the plant that's left out in the field. Now, you may say, well, there's the root system below ground too. Well, we're mainly just focused on what's above ground. And for farmers, they're worried about, okay, how do I get this out of the way that it doesn't hamper my planting so I can get every seed placed just at the right depth and not have a big pile of residue over the top of my seed so it can't make it out next spring. So that's one big concern that we've got. But what I look at the residue as this big positive out in the field. Hey, it's worth a lot of money out in fields because residue contains nutrients and it contains all the food that the microbial life in our soil are going to need. So if I can keep that residue in the field and use it for next year's crop, that's the best use for it. Well, that is, except for the fact if you have livestock, what a lot of farmers will do is they will bale up their residue, whether it's corn stalks, soybean residue, wheat residue, I mean, it, whatever crop it is, you can certainly bale that up, you can use it for bedding, it's a source of fiber, so there are uses for this besides just in the field. Even and what we, Brian. Right, and so what we get concerned about here is, hey, if you take this off the field and you don't somehow replace those nutrients, so that's a big key. But the other thing is if you take all that residue off and you don't have some type of cover there you're much more susceptible to soil erosion so those are all things that farmers are trying to factor in when they decide whether or not they should leave that residue in the field all right so one of the most common ways people will manage residue is with tillage. So if you look at farms across the United States and really around the world, you'll see farmers out there basically turning the fields black is a common phrase used in the upper Midwest where they spin that soil upside down, flip the residue underneath and bring fresh soil up on top. And it's a lot easier to work with and move around before they plant the next crop. So tillage is one way to deal with it. But there are also many farmers employing either minimum till or no-till out in their fields. So how do you deal with residue in a no-till situation? Well, many farmers will just put on residue managers in front of their planting units to push that residue off to the side to leave a little strip where the soil is clean and they can plant their seed and it can emerge without any disruption or obstacles in the way from crop residue. So that can definitely work. And then in a no-till system, by not disturbing that soil, we see an improvement in earthworm activity and other microbial life in the soil. Oftentimes, you'll see them breaking down all that residue naturally. In no till it's it's amazing for me to see fields where there's all kinds of residue out there but just a few months into the growing season it's all gone and it's all been broken down and pulled down into the soil. One thing I wanted to get to is, yes, Darren's talking about managing that residue in the spring. I want to come back to fall and before the residue is even on the ground, we're thinking as we're harvesting the crop about that overall residue management. So it depends a lot on how you set the combine, for example. We want to have a nice even spread of residue across our field. We don't want bunches, we don't want clumps of residue. And then the other thing is sizing the residue. So corn stalks, for example, are where we have a big problem because let's say that you've got a big corn stalk and it's laying out in your field and you come along in the spring and you're trying to plant your seed. The problem is when we're out planting in the spring, it's cold, it's wet, and how well do you cut through that residue of a great big thick corn stalk? Not very well. So in the fall with the combine, we use chopping corn heads now to cut the corn stalk into small little pieces. We use a capello chopping corn head and that's worked out tremendously well for us. So so now we get a better stand. We spread the residue even, it's in smaller pieces, so it's just much easier to manage. Well, crop residue is certainly something very valuable to farmers. 
they will choose a lot of different ways to manage that residue to utilize the nutrients that are in it for the next crop. Well, another thing that farmers are trying to manage on their farms is weed control, especially if they've got our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? Your time is valuable. That's why you need a Hagee STS application system. Hagee STS products are designed for precision and efficiency, allowing you to make applications all season long with just one machine. Contact your Hagee rep today. With the success of the Case IH Dagger Quad Track and Magnum Road Track tractors, it's no secret why Case IH is the leader of the track. So it wasn't surprising when the competition started imitating us. But only Case IH offers a five axle design to give you a smoother ride, more power to the ground, with less berming and compaction. Still, we're flattered. In fact, if we weren't already red, <laughs> we'd be blushing. A farmer's attention to detail is what makes the difference. You take the time for service management because you know how vital it is to your operation. You service your field like everything else because soil sampling makes all the difference and gets the results you want. Download the app Soil Test Pro and start grid sampling today. Keep your farm growing strong. The more you test, the more you know. For lower costs, higher production, Mandico Agri leads with versatility unmatched. Twister is the vertical tillage unit for no-till as well as conventional tillage. Avoid costly downtime with Twister's ease of maintenance. Its unique Coulter suspension allows it to follow the contour of the field yet remain forgiving in rocks. Our hydraulically adjustable Coulter angles mean you never leave the cab, making residue management easier, more efficient. Spring or fall, the Mandico Twister is the new leader. Check with your local dealer or visit mandicoagri.com. Precision in grain moisture management can save you thousands in spoilage and elevator docks. The AgriDrive Bullseye Controller monitors temperature and grain moisture and is available for all dryer makes and models. Plus, our AD Link feature gives you 24 7 remote monitoring and allows you to control your dryer wherever you are. Call us today for more information. Dried load store, 1855 Agri Drive. Regalia RX Biofungicide activates a plant's natural defense system, limiting the effects of disease and improving overall plant health. Regalia RX complements your fungicide program to optimize yield and strengthen return on investment. Ask your retailer for Regalia RX today. Over the last couple of years, we've seen a lot of farmers trying to save money by cutting the traits. In other words, where before they might be using a corn borer trait and a rootworm trait, now they're saying, you know what, I haven't seen many rootworms, I haven't seen many corn borers, I'm just going to cut those. I'll still plant Roundup corn, but I want to cut the traits. That's going to dramatically cut my cost. Well, yes, it's going to cut your cost, but the real question is, is it going to cut your profits? That's what we want to cover. Well, I think the big thing that farmers have looked at is, you know what, I've got cash rent, I've got seed, and I've got fertilizer. They're by far my three largest expenses each year on the farm. And wow, I've tried negotiating with the landlord and cash rent. It's tough to get them to come down. Fertilizer, wow, there just isn't enough competition in that industry to really cut things. And let's face it, most of us want to learn a lot more about fertility to really understand where we need to make those cuts. And that leaves seed. And when we think about seed, all right, I think we take a lot of things for granted. But you look at a $300 plus bag of seed corn and say, wow, I just can't spend that much money. I'm going to have to cut. And when we look at things as just expenses rather than investments, it's tough to make good decisions. Now, I'm not saying you should spend $300 or more on a bag of seed corn. You may need to and you may not need to. I just want to analyze each part of that. Hey, the genetics are worth something and then each one of these traits has additional value. Does that value play out on my farm or not? Okay, so let's start with the corn bore thing because that's the one where 25 years ago when I was in college and right after college, I worked for FMC and I scouted, I personally scouted just thousands of acres of cornfields for corn bore. It was a terrible problem, but here was the biggest issue. 
Most people didn't scout their fields, they didn't know they had a problem, they didn't spray timely, and if you just sprayed timely, that took care of the first generation corn borer, and it really did pretty well. I mean, we're talking almost 100% control. The problem was, the second generation corn borer, we could never get even close to 100% control, the timing was really, really difficult. So when BT corn came out, I thought, oh man, this really solves the problem, and now we just don't have to worry about it. Well, as corn borer numbers have gone down over the years, a lot of people are thinking they need to cut this trait. And you can try it. I mean, for all these things, like we always say, hey, we have no problem with you trying this versus the other thing. Okay, so try some non-corn borer stuff versus the corn borer and just see how it all turns out. But if you're going to go non-corn borer, now you got to scout. Okay, so a lot of times what it means when you buy a trait is you have less scouting. But if you do see any corn borer in your field and you don't have that trait, we suggest you get out there right away. Typically we like granule products better than liquids, but liquids are dirt cheap now, two bucks an acre for the full rate. And then with the second generation corn borer, you're going to have to call a plane in and in both cases, Whenever those corn borers show up, you got to be really timely. You might want to even consider getting traps on your farm so you can find out when the corn borers show up in your area. It's just a lot more work. You just have to decide in your own area. I can tell you on our farm, we've had so many corn borer problems over the years, it's going to be hard for me to go away from that trait. It would have to be a lot of dollar savings for me to skip out on it. All right, I'll say two things on the corn borer thing before we leave that topic. One, some more corn borer moths this year than I've seen in a decade. The other thing when I think about corn borers is this. It's one thing to say, you know what, I'm going to save X amount of dollars by not buying that trait. Pencil out what those things are. Brian talked about, hey, what if you have to hire a plane once? What if you have to hire a plane twice? Then you have the insecticide as well, plus you have that extra scouting. And for some of us, you, you may say, wow, I farm too many acres. I have to pay somebody to scout. Okay, we'll pencil that in too and see what it's going to be. Make sure you budget that I'm going to be needing to scout. I'm going to have to schedule that to make sure I get that done. All right, corn borer is one thing. Corn rootworm is another. Now, I said I saw a lot of corn borer moths this year. There were a couple of times this year where I saw, uh, other than one time in my life, I have never seen so many corn rootworm beetles in my life. I was doing a field day up in North Dakota. There were so many corn rootworm beetles. I mean, literally, I could hardly talk. They were down my shirt. They were in my hair. They were all over. And it was an area where a number of farmers had gone back to conventional corn hybrids trying to save money. And I understand it, especially in North Dakota, where they aren't going to get 250 bushel corn. But this year, farmers are definitely going to be putting on insecticide. And we did some research plots right in that area looking at corn rootworm insecticides. And we'll talk about some of that data coming up later this winter. The big difference between rootworms and corn borers is you can't scout for rootworms. By the time you see rootworms, all the damage was done a long time ago, and it's just never going to work. And there's no rescue product for rootworms. Sure, for rootworm beetles, that's a little different deal when you get to the adult stage you can kill those but basically keep this in mind the damage to your corn was really done by the root worms the larvae stage probably a month or two earlier than that and if you see rootworm beetles right away bam you know hey I lost a bunch of yield because the rootworm larvae were in my field feeding on my crop that's how we got to the adult stage so what we suggest is again you know it all depends on your area and your situation but we're real big on using the trait but if you don't want to use the trait that's fine just use a full rate of insecticide the dries, like Force and Aztec, are absolutely better than the liquid products, usually 5 to 10% better or more. So if you want to go that way, great. You're going to spend in the range of 15 to 20 bucks an acre. It's down just a little bit from the last year. But then you could also go liquid. You might spend in the range of 8 to $12 an acre for something like Capture LFR. So you can save some money. It can go in with your liquid fertilizer. That's an option as well. The last thing I would say is just pick the right genetics to maximize yield on your farm. Now, you may say, you know what, I really want trade. I'm going to pick this hybrid because it has this trait package. Hey, traits are one thing, and you can put a great trait on a horrible hybrid. So make sure you have a good hybrid in that trait package that you want. And then, hey, if you are switching away from traits, make sure you get a great germplasm for your area. Uh, don't just say, hey, I need a conventional hybrid. Hey, here's a 90-day hybrid. It might be the right maturity, a conventional hybrid, the package that you want, and it might not be one that yields very high in your area. So make sure you're getting a high-yielding hybrid, whether you take traits or not. Yeah, and again, we just want you to understand, we don't care if you use traits or not. We just want to make sure you're maximizing profit on your farm. So try some things out. If you're going to go away from traits, you better do a lot more scouting. Well, one other thing you may be scouting for is our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? Being a farmer means securing your land and livelihood for the future. 
Harvest Solutions from Capello USA have the grit to get you there. Our product lines for corn, sunflowers, and forage are designed for efficiency and longevity, preventing harvest loss while minimizing maintenance and downtime. To do everything you can to advance your farmland to the next generation, call us at 855-CAPELLO or visit us at capellousa.com. Capello USA, Italian craftsmanship, American grit. We've been dealing with AgriLiquid a little over seven years. I was skeptical, to be honest, but I watched the results from several clients. Those results were increased production and reduction in input cost. With AgriLiquid, we saw an increase in the size of the initial root mass. For ranchers, that means forage production a lot quicker. AgriLiquid works. The bottom line is profitability. I've been involved in developing new technologies in agriculture for over three decades. The changing times demanded that we develop new and better equipment. Dry powder applications on seed can only be highly successful if they can be easily, effectively, and accurately applied to the target. That's where our company, Changing Times, and CT Applicators come into the picture. The innovative CT Applicators are designed to give you the most accurate application of products such as talc, soybean inoculants, or other dry products. Remember, CT Applicators for the changing times. Presenting the new 2016 Apache Sprayer. If you could save money and increase yield, why wait? Delaying change can cost you money. It's phenomenal the return of investment it brings back. In my mind, a sprayer is the biggest return of investment you can bring back. Apache owners apply in half the time for full type, apply when they want versus custom, and spend less than hydrostat owners, not to mention less weight on their crops. Go ahead and compare. We hope you do. Visit ETSprayers.com to locate a dealer and how to save with an Apache. Apache, now more than ever. Looking to maximize yield? Quick Roots from Monsanto BioEgg is a microbial seed inoculant that allows the plant root to explore a greater volume of soil, the key to higher yields. Quick Roots continues to generate yield response on corn, soybeans, wheat, and more, and is applied to the seed so the live microorganisms go right to work enhancing seedling vigor, increasing the uptake of certain nutrients including NPK, and expanding root volume. Maximize yield on your farm this season. Get Quick Roots today. One micronutrient that is getting a lot of press now is boron, in part because we're finding it to be deficient in a lot of fields across the country. I'd say this is the nutrient that may be the most deficient on average in the U.S. today. Well, here's the challenge with boron. It's really tough to build up levels in soil because it's leachable. When you think about leachable nutrients, nitrate, nitrogen, and sulfate, sulfur, we hear those a lot talked about. You know, I gotta be careful with those because they leach. Boron really falls into that category too, in that it can leach out through soil. Yeah, it's not going to be as bad as what nitrate is for sure, but nevertheless it's not going to stay there. It's not going to stay put like zinc for example, wood or copper. So you got to manage this one just a little bit differently. So you pull a soil test, you look at your boron levels and you see, wow, I'm dramatically low. Well, what is low and what range do we really need to be in? Well, on a soil test for a Midwest lab soil test, and it's different for every lab because they do different extraction methods and that type of thing, but 1.2 to 3.0 is kind of the range where shooting for 1.2 parts per million to 3.0 parts per million so if we're in that range of 1.2 to 3 generally speaking we're in pretty good shape so we'd like to see a soil test and then we want to look at the tissue tests as well boron typically is needed when plants are flowering so real early in the year a little bit low on boron usually isn't that big a deal but as you get later in the year it's incredibly important so as we work with some of these high yield farmers from around the country they really talk a lot about boron just like we've been talking more about boron over the last few years as well. It is important. We've got to have it for good pollination. If we're going to have lots of seeds out there, you need high boron levels. Well, one of the common misconceptions about boron is, well, it's needed for this crop, not <laughs> right. for this crop. Like it's alfalfa. It's a critical element for really any crop that you're raising out there. And yeah, you bring up alfalfa, and I, I like to tell this story about alfalfa. I had a farmer that called a local co-op. They were going to come out and spread a dry fertilizer blend of N, P, and K. And he said, hey, let's throw some boron into that dry blend. And as they bounced down the road, he's about 10 miles away from that co-op, all the boron sorted out to the bottom of this spinner spreader. And when he started driving out in the field, boom, all the boron blew out in the first... I don't know, 100 feet or something, and it literally killed the alfalfa that first 100 feet, 
and then he got no boron on the rest of the field. The whole point is, when you're going to go out and spread boron, you got to be careful because you only need a tiny little bit on our own farm. What we're usually doing is using liquid, and liquid might be a little more expensive than some of these dry forms, but at least then I feel confident that I can spread it accurately across the field. So what we've been doing the last few years is throwing a little bit of boron in with our pre-emerge herbicide. We're also using a little bit of boron, like in a solubore type product, foliar feeding with either herbicides or fungicides, something like that. And then another thing that we're going to do on our own farm in the next few falls is, hey, if we've got some boron deficiency, we'll just take the sprayer out and go spray it. We might mix solubore up in water and go spray it out on the field. So then we at least know, hey, it's out there. And I'm not too worried about working it in because since it's leachable, it will move through the soil profile. And if you say, well, hey, my only way of getting it out there is with my planter, fine, put it over in a two by two or somewhere off to the side of the row for improved safety. One other thing is test your lime, test your manure, test anything you're going to throw out on the field. You might be getting some boron out there that way, so that could help save you some money. Well, saving some money on nutrients could be a good thing, especially if you need that money for weed control. We'll show you what products might work best to control our weed of the week coming up next. The Weed of the Week is sponsored by the Enlist Weed Control System from Dow AgroSciences, a new herbicide and trait system that will build on glyphosate. Farming isn't just in the land, it's in you. Take control of weeds like never before. Enlist builds on the Roundup Ready system, combining proven control of a new 2,4-D and glyphosate in Enlist Dual Herbicide. Protect what matters without changing the way you farm. Talk to your seed or crop protection supplier today. Purslane. Well, purslane is one of those weeds that grows really low to the ground and spreads out. So normally what you need is a spot where crops aren't growing well. It's not a weed that competes really heavily with crops. So if you get towards the end of the field or you have a little spot that drowned out and then dries back up later in the season, this is normally where we see purslane. The one thing about purslane that makes it really difficult is, let's just say you do some tillage out there, well, a chopped up piece of stem can actually regenerate and start growing again. So it's one of those weeds I really prefer a herbicide solution even to using a hoe or pulling the weed. All right, so if you want to control purslane, our best suggestion is to start with a good pre-program, just like in every other crop or every other weed we're talking about. Best thing in wheat is sharpen. In corn, we'd probably say, sure, start triple flex, even verdict to have some decent activity. And then in soybeans, I like one of the Authority or Valor products. You get those out there. I also like Metribuzin with just about any of those broadleaf weeds. Throw that in as a tank mix partner as well. So start with a good pre. Okay, post-emerge, let's say you have it in wheat. I would use wide match, and I really like the tank mix of Addition Broad Spec. It seems to fill in all the gaps that wide match has in terms of weed control, and also really boosts the control of something like So wide person. match plus Addition Broad Spec. That'd be my selection. When we look at corn, I like Status the best. The HPPD products along with some atrazine can work as well. In soybeans, if you don't have Roundup or Liberty as options, which let's face it, most acres do, let's just say you had to use conventional herbicides. I would use Bassagran and a full rate of Cobra. That'd be my two favorite products there. Well, that's it for our Weed of the Week purse line, but stay tuned, Iron Talk is coming up next. There are no marks of conflict lining this landscape. No echoes of economic hardship, just the unmistakable murmur of Mother Nature's hand. In the perennial quest to outperform, ensure your crop gets the nutrients it craves with a Vail Phosphorus Fertilizer Enhancer. Nothing helps protect your investment more, so you can grow confidently no matter what comes your way. Avail. Hold your ground. Dirty work pays. That is if your dirty work includes a Soil Max Gold Digger tile plow. Soil Max tile plows feature zero deflection technology. With the only tile plow factory paired with Ag Leaders and Teleslope control system, you eliminate the need for grade calculations and lasers. So make your next investment in a Soil Max Gold Digger. Better yield, longer planting and harvest windows, better water management is all yours with SoilMax. Visit SoilMax.com. 
At Fisher Tradition Farms, we verus all of our acres, and any new additional acres are automatically verused. Verus maps allow us to know exactly where our soil types change and how much they change. We use AgriLiquids Enhance, High Energy N, and Access that allows us to add sulfur. We can customize our AgriLiquid products on a per pound, per acre basis as needed. I choose Stein. I choose service. I choose results. I choose research. I choose genetics. I choose Stein. At Stein, we have products that are second to none. You know, Stein has a, a background of the highest yielding genetics in the marketplace. They are a world class leader in genetics. We push the limits, we try new things, we develop genetics, all designed to benefit the farmer. I choose Stein because Stein has yield. Are you wasting money applying the wrong fertilizers on your farm? Here are three easy steps to finding out. First, download the free Ag PhD soil test app. Next, pull your own samples. You can probably sample a thousand acres a day using five acre grids. Finally, submit the samples and get both Ag PhD and Midwest Labs recommendations. You can also quickly and easily build your own variable rate application maps and controller files. Go to agphdsoiltest.com to learn more. Presenting the new 2016 Apache Sprayer. If you could save money and increase yield, why wait? Delaying change can cost you money. It's phenomenal the return of investment it brings back. In my mind, a sprayer is the biggest return of investment you can bring back. Apache owners apply in half the time for full type, apply when they want versus custom, and spend less than hydrostat owners, not to mention less weight on their crops. Go ahead and compare. We hope you do. Visit etsprayers.com to locate a dealer and how to save with an Apache. Apache, now more than ever. Working in agriculture over the past three decades, I saw a need for an accurate way to apply dry product to seed. That's where our Changing Times applicators come in. The CT applicator brush sifts powder into small particles resulting in proper distribution. Quantities can be adjusted by the speed of the brush rotation. This allows for even and accurate distribution of product, application at the time of planting, can be used with any seed delivery system and saves farmers time, labor, and money. Remember, CT applicators for the changing times. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. The AFS Connect Farm Management System from Case IH connects you and only you to the information you need most from your equipment from anywhere at any time. AFS Connect, only from Case IH. Keep your equipment and parts information organized. In today's Iron Talk, I'll show you a popular app for your smartphone or tablet that links to an industry-leading website. It's no secret that we run primarily Case IH equipment on our farm, so when we need parts, we're calling our local dealer for help and information on a variety of machines. However, it just got a whole lot easier. Parts Store is an online site where you can interact with your dealer and get information on, well, parts. Now you can connect on your mobile device with the My Shed app. Through the MyShed app, you can organize your equipment by model, store maintenance information, access parts manuals and assembly diagrams for your equipment, search for and bookmark common parts items to make ordering easier, create a parts needed list and email it to your dealer to get a bid or to place an order, receive product alerts, and keep up to date with some helpful videos. Inside the app, you can visit my toolbox for crop futures and weather, preservative calculator, disc blade selector, lubricant and fluid selector guide, battery finder, and much more. If you'd like more information, visit Parts Store .com. That's all for today's Iron Talk, and now back to the show. Closed captioning for Ag PhD is sponsored by Norwood Sales. On your farm, you need speed and year round effectiveness in your tillage program. The Quick Till from Norwood Sales allows you to move quickly through your fields, maximizing time and improving yield. Constructed of heavy duty materials, the Quick Till is ideal for both spring and fall applications. From preparing a healthy seed bed early in the season to breaking up corn residue after harvest. For more information about how a Quick Till can improve fields in your farm, call Norwood Sales today. That's all the time we have for today's show, but before we go, we want to invite you to tune in to the Ag PhD radio show. You'll find us on the Rural Radio Channel, that's 147 Sirius XM, at 2 p.m. and 11 p.m. Central each weekday. And don't miss the next Ag PhD TV show. We'll have another Weed of the Week, Farm Basics, Iron Talk, and a whole lot more. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD.
Soil is nature's filter to keep contaminants out of our water. As rain falls on soils and seeps down through, the minerals and microbial life in the soil remove and detoxify nutrients as well as inorganic materials. To learn how farmers manage soil and groundwater, visit the Responsible Nutrient Management Foundation at rnmf.org.